Um, apparently, if you haven't heard, there are quite a few different conspiracy theories about the whole issue. Um, the most recent being Dave Mustaine's little nugget of information uh, that he said out in uh, Singapore, I believe it was. And as of note, Dave Mustaine, you are a fucking cocksucker, and if I ever see you in fucking public, I will beat the shit out of you. Anyway, um, he's saying that this is all part of a false flag that the government has set up because of the recent amount of shootings and everything to provoke a assault weapons ban and take guns away from everybody. You know, the usual crazy, you know, paranoid, delusional BS that comes about. Um, so I've had every conspiracy theorist coming after me saying that I'm just a member of the government's shadow ops, psyops, MK Ultra, you know, whatever horseshit crazy idea that they got about how uh, we're all part of uh, an actor's guild that has basically just cooked up this whole thing, and it's, I think the website, if you're interested in looking at it, because it's, it's pretty goddamn retarded, is uh, wellaware1.com or something like that, and this asshole even took snippets of my videos and put them in this little collage video he has. I'm trying to DMCA him right now, but um, he's saying that everybody that was there is are all seasoned actors, and this is all a ploy to just basically my, uh, brainwash us. Like, I'll put it this way. Joe Montana, Joe Montana is the Aurora police chief. The guy that plays Elliot Stabler from Law and Order was the judge that has been charging him in Centennial. Yeah. Yeah. So, and apparently, me and a few other people are members of SNL. Have yet to see a check from NBC, but yeah, we're members of SNL. Um, it's getting it's getting really ridiculous when it comes to it. And then, of course, the uh, deluge of Next Day Rambos that I've had to deal with in person now. Because before it was just people across the world telling me that if I'd have been in there with a gun, I could have stopped that guy. Or, you know, the lovely senator, I think it was from Arizona or something of that effect, saying that all the people in that theater were cowards because they didn't go and rush the guy. You know, just, just ridiculous, silly crap like that that I've had to hear for the past month, you know. But now I'm hearing it in public, like I'll walk into a, be walking through the store with my daughter or something and... I'll hear people sit there talking about it, and, you know, most people just talk about it like, oh, that was terrible, did you hear about that, yeah, you know, they hear about the guy, and all of a sudden you'll hear some fucking asshole come come off with, it was just a ploy, and all this, and, yeah, I had one guy come up to me and start sticking his finger in my face, telling me that I was an agent for the U.S. government, and I worked for Lockheed Martin. For those of you who don't know, Lockheed Martin is a big com corporation here in Colorado. There's a large production facility. If you've seen Bowling for Columbine, you probably know about it. Um, down in Littleton, where I work. And there are a lot of people that say a lot of crap. Like, there's all these different shadow organizations that are here in the mountains and stuff. And there might be, but at the same time, they blow it way out of proportion. You know, to the point of Area 51 you know, out of proportion. And so it's it's just, it's gotten really, really ridiculous when it comes to that. And so I've had people on my Facebook, you know, my, they found my uh, family's information and they started calling my family. And right now I'm going to say it. Fuck you, Fox News. Heather, whatever the fuck your name was from Fox News, you can kiss my ass. I have never been hounded by somebody from the press so fucking hard. You know, I had some people after this happened count me a little bit because apparently I was one of the few people that was willing to talk in depth about some of the stuff. And I just did that for my sake and for the sake of information because I didn't want people conjecturing about everything like they were for like that first few hours. Um, but when somebody tells you no seven times, that doesn't mean you call another 20. 
and then dig up their family and then go after their wife's family and try to get them to con us into giving an interview to you. No, that's just stupid. You know, so yeah, um, it, I just didn't want to do it to begin with because I already knew they were going to try to either spin it into ridiculous proportions, which they did with a couple of people I've met, or they were going to try and play the gun role. You know, the, I had, I accidentally got, I did a bunch of interviews that morning. I think I did like 20 interviews that morning just because I wanted it to get out there. You know, it was the first video up on YouTube just because I wanted to get information out there that this is happening, this is going on. I got called a liar quite a bit, but, you know, apologies were soon handed out. Um, but I just wanted information to get out there because I didn't want blind conjecture. You know, there's so much blind conjecture when it comes to these shootings because nobody wants to say anything. There's no light to some of these situations. So I figured might as well put a light out there. Because if not, then you're going to have every, you're going to have worse conspiracy theories than this. You know, but apparently it only helped a little bit because then different conspiracy theories came up. But anyway, I did a bunch of different ones. I did like BBC, I did some Australian thing, I did uh, Russian, I did Jap uh, Japanese show, I did um, a few, quite a few here in the States. I did California, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, um, Atlanta. Uh, Chicago, quite a few different. For uh, I did CNN a few times. Uh, I know I, did, I know I talked to Dr. Drew. I know I talked to Robin Mead, Al Sharpton, of all fucking people. Um, but I just did it for the sake of just trying to get what I knew out there, put my story out there, you know. And that's what we've been doing with the group is just trying to patch together that night. You know, we're talking to everybody and just trying to put a patchwork of viewpoints together to see what's going on and. I did one, and I remember it was this guy, it was a real conservative dude, and he could not wait to get to the point of, because he was asking me questions, and I was explaining what had happened, but he kept cutting me off, and I kept thinking this is really weird, the fact that he's cutting me off, because this has just happened, not even nine hours ago, and suddenly he's just like, now Quentin, if you'd have had a gun, what would you have done? And it's like, wow, really? Really? Because this is what he was expecting. He was expecting me to go, well, I think that I would have bared down on him with my 1911 and just put one right between his eyes. I'd have saved so many people in that theater. I can't understand why nobody had a gun. That's what he wanted. You could just tell us what he wanted. But considering the fact that the theater was tear gassed, it is a packed house with a ton of people rampaging to get out of there away from being shot. And the fact that this guy was head to toe armored up. I think that I had a shot at him. And they're also saying that he was on sedatives. So, fairly calm. I'm thinking, hmm. I go and I put a couple of low caliber rounds into this guy. I'm just going to piss him off. Hmm. But then, what happened to somebody who stood up in front of me and I shot that person? Or there's a billion other things that could have happened. You know? Hindsight is twenty twenty. Would've, should've, could've, might've. Could've saved everybody that was there. But the thing is, you can sit there and come up with so much conjecture, as much as you want, but it's not going to change what happened. And so, he got really pissed off. The fact that I didn't go 100% with him and try to act like I was fucking, uh, I just forgot who the hell the guy was from Lincoln. Anyway, um, going to go in there with my gun and just clean house, you know, Yosemite Sam, by the way, but just really ridiculous crap like that, you know, just, it doesn't help, and on top of that, it just makes you look more fucking batshit crazy when you sit there and you automatically want to jump to that point you know so then I have people you know PMing me on uh, YouTube uh, homeschool mom yeah that's a real good name for a fucking psychopath telling me about how I'm a CIA operative and she knows my secret and she's in Utah and she can come over here and shoot me in the face 
like that's really going to help the situation. You're going to go and shoot somebody that just came out of one theater or one tragedy tragedy with a gun. Logic just does not compute with some people, I guess. You know, there was one victim, unfortunate, where she had just came from another shooting up in Canada and was just ha just happened to be there and was killed. You know, nobody can look at that and say, my God, how ridiculous is it that that happened? That that coincidence was even there. You know, I could see somebody getting in one car accident and then dying in another because you're in a car all the time. It's, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. But to go from one mass shooting to another mass shooting within the span of months is just unfathomable. But apparently that's the way of the world anymore. So, for the people that would love to threaten violence against me, kiss my ass. I've gotten so many threats. I've gotten so much shit. But take it in stride. I really could give a fuck anymore when it comes to those people. It's gotten really ridiculous, you know. And for all the internet tough guys and stuff like that, it's just like if you're talking shit to me about some movie that I said I liked, it don't mean shit and it makes you look that much stupider. It's been one hell of a month. That's all I know. It's been up and down crazy. Um, the life is what it is. I've moved on quite a bit. Um, this will be the first time I've talked about it in you know weeks. You know, besides just the random person that I've known that I meet for the first time in like a long time that sees that I was there. You know. This is the first time I'll actually sit here and avidly talk about it outside of, uh, you know, just random conversation with friends or family. But figured I'd just put that out there for now. Um, hoping to get continue with my original YouTube shenanigans, but I don't know anymore. I'm just being out time with being a dad and everything and work and whatnot, probably going to pick up a second job just because things have been a little bit hectic since the shooting, so financial-wise, I need to shore it up, so I figure I'd give this little snippet to you guys, uh, the ones I've been asking anyway, uh, anybody else that feels like complaining about it, go right the hell ahead, it's the internet, it's what you do, but it's time for me to go to bed.